Hello and welcome to this episode of Essex by the Sea. I'm Owen Ward, exploring the Essex coast, finding out about the amazing and interesting stories it has to offer. Don't forget to subscribe on your favourite podcast app and if you like what you hear, tell your friends about Essex by the Sea as well. For this episode, I'm down here on the beach as what many call the Sunshine Coast. And this bank holiday weekend certainly been the case with thousands flocking to Clacton. I'm right next to the Martello Tower here in the town and on these glorious sandy beaches next to a blue cabin which has got emblazoned on the side Beach Patrol. Danny Ailing is a beach patroller here in Clacton. So what does the Beach Patrol team actually do? So we're quite a diverse team. Um, We sort of deal with everything that happens on the seafront um, we cover about 36 miles of coastline um, with various beach patrol stations um, across the coast from Brightland Sea, Dover Court, Martello, Clacton, Frinton uh, and Walton. Um, we do everything from lost children, local bylaws, um, whether that be dogs on the beaches, um, cycling, some antisocial behaviour as well, um, as well as um, preventing accidents from occurring, as well as responding to incidents, um, first aid, uh, lost children, uh, the list is, is endless. Anything that happens on the beach generally will, will come down to us and, and we'll manage that as and when. And, and are you council staff or, or volunteers? Uh, so we're all council staff. Um, we get recruitments every year um, and myself and a couple of other members of the team are returning year after year and we have sort of a handful of, of new staff. Around 30 members of staff, um, it varies sort of from full time to sort of like myself as an ad hoc basis, um, but it's around 30 strong uh, teams sort of along the close line. So what made you decide then to want to join the Beach Patrol and, and, and do what you do here in Clacton? So my, initially I joined the Beach Patrol um, when I was 16 uh, for driving lessons. So it was a, a nice little summer job uh, to earn a bit of money and to pay for driving lessons and you know put the money towards a car. Uh, and then 11 years later I'm still here enjoying the job. It must be quite a dream job to spend your days when it's like this and just looking up above us here on the beach there's not a single cloud in the sky you know uh, and actually as I just turn around there's, there's a few people at the moment dotted along but these beaches can get really busy uh, how is it to, to spend your days down here on the beach um, my personal opinion is I think this is the best job in the town without a doubt um, the days are are completely are varied and we get some very quiet days um, absolutely downpours and maybe one or two seagulls and maybe a person walking along the beach and other days it can be in you know, a couple of thousand um, that we're keeping an eye on um, the beach and the water i, I guess particularly uh, school holidays and, and bank holidays yep so that is our, our sort of the main times that we patrol um, is school holidays weekends and um, bank holidays right away from easter um, through to the end of the six weeks holidays I was going to say, it's not for the whole year that the Beach Patrol is here. You work alongside the RNLI, which is stationed just, just along the beach from here, as well as uh, you know the Beach Patrollers during the, the peak season. Absolutely, yes. So, like I say, we start from around April, depending on when the Easter holidays fall. We work every weekend and then every school holiday up until the um, beginning of September to when the six weeks holidays end. Um, we're on duty from about 10.30 to 6pm uh, or 5, 6pm, depending on weather uh, and days. And obviously the lifeboat crews and Coast Guard teams are on call uh, 24-7 around the coast. And when people are visiting uh, the likes of Clacton or or the other beaches along the Tendering Coast, what sort of things should should people do and perhaps familiarise themselves when they're here? Um, So the top advice would be to always visit a beach patrolled or a lifeguarded beach. Um, That should be their their first thing to to do. And once they arrive onto that particular beach, look out for all the beach safety signs, which are... um, found sort of on each access point um, as well as some of the signs on the beach and familiarise themselves with um, the local flags as well um, as well as checking sort of on the RNLI website the HM Coast Guard website as well as our local council website for all the latest safety advice. Now I've heard of uh, blue flagged beaches <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing it's not just that that's flying over the beach there, there's others that, that mean other things. Absolutely yes so the blue flag beach we've got the seaside awards um, we have red flags which advise people not to swim it's not safe to swim uh, we have red and yellows, which means that the beach patrol or lifeguards are on duty, as well as having some offshore winds, which is like the yellow sock, or the orange sock, which advises um, bathers that it's an offshore wind, so inflatables are, are not advised, uh, as well as having checkered flags for sort of powered watercraft or surfing areas. So really, if you're coming for a, a day trip to the beach, look out for those red and yellow flags, because those are the beaches where there'll be somebody, if you need help, uh, available and, and and how do people get in touch with with either the beach patrol you know if, if if they 
have an issue or, or, or come into difficulty how do people actually get in touch um so exactly visit a beach that's got the red and yellow flags and that is the most safest place to swim there's someone will be watching you um if you get into difficulty in the water it's simply lying back, back on your back uh, raising your hand and calling for help and um, that's going to be the easiest way to, to attract somebody's attention if there's no lifeguards or beach patrol about um, obviously calling 999 and asking for the coast guard and giving your, your exact location um, will be, be the way to contact i noticed on the uh, beach hut here i mean it's not a beach hut it is a beach hut but it's it's one <laughs> yeah. purposely for the beach patrol absolutely you've actually got um three random words on the on the front of it what what, what are they so what three words um someone has divided sort of the whole world up into sort of meter square boxes so no matter where you go in the world if you used to download the app what's three words um to your one meter square will give you three random um words it may be sand bucket car and that's going to pinpoint you to this exact location you, you know you move a meter either side you're going to get some completely other random words um so if you're not you're not sure on your exact location um download what three words um and then it'll give you your your exact location Thankfully, you know, Clacton's a, a relatively uh, safe beach because of the work that you do. Absolutely, yes. Um, we are about, we've got plenty of experienced members of staff. Um, obviously, accidents do occur. They do happen along the coast. It happens around the world um, every day. And obviously, we're, we're there to try and to prevent that. And we do prevent an awful lot um, of accidents um, from occurring or sort of stopping that, that, that process of, of illness or injury at the time. You do have a, a, another job outside of being a beach patrol, don't you? Uh, for you, it must be a bit like a bit of a busman's holiday, isn't it? Indeed, yes. Yeah, it was a bit difficult to, to walk away from the job. Um, gaining a, another employment for the ambulance service, um, I couldn't leave the beach. So the manager here was, was kind enough to let me stay. Uh, and I do an awful lot of time down here. I split my time between the ambulance service and the beach patrol. I, I guess, actually, you bring obviously your skills from your your workplace but also you know that then helps with with working with everybody else that you work with because you're not just on your own here on the beach patrol you know, you have the iron and i you have the police you've got the ambulance as well uh, service and and i guess the fire service in, in some cases absolutely yes we work around with, with all the emergency services you know the, the police ambulance fire and coast guard and obviously the lifeboat crews um my job as as a as a paramedic i can come in and i provide some in-house training to the team they obviously undergo um emergency first aid at work courses every year um, as well as um, other of health and safety courses um, so I can come in uh, as well as some other colleagues who work for the ambulance service and deliver some ongoing training and support throughout the season um, if anyone's not sure of any incidents they obviously can contact us um, and we can happy to go and see what's going on and offer some advice or, or support to the other team members. And I guess uh, you touched upon the training there I suppose in the off season that uh, it's a good time to train up and, and, and uh, uh, sort of uh, rehone those skills ready for, for the peak season during the summer absolutely it's, during the winter times it is more of a challenge to get us all together because most people go back to, to college and university or other jobs um, so most of our happens sort of our stuff happens at pre-season so we all come back together start um, all our training together all our courses um, obviously now we've got the lifeguards as well um, which is sort of going through their training um, to provide safety cover on the water here the sun's shining what would your one key message be to people who are coming down to Clacton to enjoy the day uh, here on these gloriously golden sandy beaches here? What, what would that one key message be? Um, would be to, to respect the water and stay beach safe. Um, and sort of on that, again, going back to sort of choose a, a lifeguarded beach. Um, if people get into trouble in the water, um, remember to float to live. Um, so that's lying on your back, using your arms and your legs to, to help you float. Um, and obviously in an emergency, call triple nine uh, or 112 uh, and ask for the Coast Guard. I suspect it's uh, the bank holiday weekend that, that we're recording this particular episode at the start of the half term. You're expecting a busy week. We are indeed, yes. The weather forecast is looking amazing, so we're expecting a lot of visitors and hopefully everyone has a safe and enjoyable time. Danny, thank you ever so much for joining me here on Essex by the Sea. Next time. 108, 109, 110, 111. You were right, Michelle. <laughs> I had a little bit of out of breath as we come up. And wow, look at this view. Yeah, it's stunning, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. It is meant to be one of the best views in Essex from the top of the Nays Tower. Don't forget to subscribe on your favourite podcast app and like and follow on social media. You can find Essex by the Sea on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. So until next time, thanks very much for listening. <laughs>